Well, it looks like it's just about that day that all turkeys fear, Thanksgiving. Are you thankful for something this year? I can tell you that turkeys are thankful for tofurkey, but you herbivores out there are probably sick and tired of getting looks from people around the dinner table asking questions like, how the heck can you eat that? Looks like it's on chemistry's shoulders to make sure that fake meats meet the standards of our carnivore masses and maybe even give planet Earth something to be a little thankful for itself. Today's episode was sponsored by ACS Central Science. By 2050, there's going to be around 9.6 billion human stomachs to fill, and at current consumption rates, we'll need an estimated 73% increase in livestock to do it. Livestock currently produces about 15% of greenhouse gases on the planet. Also, it's been estimated that one pound of beef can require up to 24,000 gallons of water to produce. Long story short, with the way we're headed, meat production is anything but sustainable. How unsustainable? Some researchers believe that ending beef production will reduce our carbon footprints even more than cutting out driving cars. So why not go fake? Well, because the real thing just tastes too darn good. Meat gets its flavor from the thousands of molecules that are released during muscle and fat cell destruction. After slaughter, enzymes in meat tissue break down into simpler amino acids, sugars, and fatty acids that create a cocktail of delicious meaty flavor. When cooked, the heat makes the sugars and amino acids undergo the Maillard reaction, which is to thank for all the amazing meat smells. An important part of red meat flavor is an oxygen-carrying protein called myoglobin. When meat is cooked, myoglobin releases an iron-bearing compound called heme that helps produce aromas and flavors specific to meats. This iron in myoglobin is also what makes uncooked meat red and cooked meat turn brown. If you want to get fake meat right, you've got to cover these reactions, and you've got to nail meat's soft fibrous texture. Take Turkey's imitation brother Tofurkey. This, like many other fake meats, is made up of tofu and seitan. Seitan is produced from gluten, the primary proteins found in wheat, and yes, it's that gluten. Another common substitute meat is texturized vegetable protein, or TVP for short. While these products can have umami flavors added to them to help them taste like meat, they're just kind of spongy and don't have the same mouthfeel. For this reason, new techniques have emerged that help massage a meat-like texture into plant proteins. High moisture extrusion is a process that heats and twists a mix of water and powdered proteins on a screw. As the proteins unfold, they start aligning in the direction of a moving screw, and once cooled, maintain a fibrous texture quite similar to meat. New conditions are also being set up to grow the style of fake meat using a plant version of myoglobin to improve both its taste and appearance. But what if plant proteins are the wrong idea? What if the best fake meats could be grown from cell cultures in the lab? So back in 2013, a lab in the Netherlands offered up a $325,000 burger grown from cow stem cells. Well, guess what? That same burger now costs a whopping $11. And while that was real meat, the lucky first tasters noticed the flavor was a little bit lean, as it was only the muscle cells grown and didn't have any fats. But as this process becomes more economically viable, and as labs work hard at tailoring the style of fake meat to be more nutritious and to taste better, it's starting to look like a serious option for the future of fake meats. One study even suggests that this process of cellular agriculture could be significantly better for the environment than growing cells in cows. As for that tofurkey on the table, look folks, it may not be as good as the real thing, but at least it's a start. We just want to say thanks to ACS Central Science for making this video possible. If you want to learn more about the future of fake meats, check out their article, A Fresh Take on Fake Meats, produced in collaboration with Chemical and Engineering News. A link's down in the description. As for you Thanksgiving gluttons, check out this video on what happens when you eat too much. Also, check out this video to find out what chemical compounds our friends over at Speaking of Chemistry are thankful for. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe on the way out.